This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite you this morning to stand as you are comfortable and able and join with me in our call to worship. What does God have in store for us today? God invites us to come and see. Come and see. What is God up to and where is God leading us today? God calls. Come and see. Come and see. God reveals. Our eyes are open. We have seen Jesus, so we cry out. Come and see. Come and see. Remain standing as we join in our first hymn, number 405, Seek Ye First. We believe in Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, our teacher, example, and redeemer, the Savior of the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit, God present with us for guidance, for comfort, for strength. We believe in the forgiveness of sins, in the life of love and prayer, and in grace equal to every need. We believe in the Word of God contained in the Old and New Testaments as a sufficient rule both of faith and of practice. We believe in the church, those who are united in the living Lord for the purpose of worship and service. We believe in the reign of God, as the divine will realized in human society and in the family of God where we are all brothers and sisters. We believe in the final triumph of righteousness and in the life everlasting. Amen. And you may be seated. And I want to welcome you today to St. Paul United Methodist Church in Fort Smith, Arkansas. I am Pastor Steve Porch. And it is a great pleasure and honor to be in worship with you in person and online. A um, couple of quick announcements for you today. Uh, tonight at 5 p.m. at St. James Missionary Baptist Church, which is right over here on 50th Street, uh, will be the uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Concert of Prayer. Uh, put together by the uh, Coalition of Christian Clergy in the River Valley. And um, you are invited to come for a time of worship and prayer and fellowship um, as we pray for uh, all the, the different areas in our, of service in our uh, community this evening. That's at 5 o'clock, St. James Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, you are invited to that. Um, I want to... Uh, to let you know that two weeks from today, um, uh, between this service and the second service during the Sunday school hour, we're going to have a come and go reception 
uh, to celebrate Francis Baker. Shh, don't tell her. Uh, Francis is down here. As you know, Francis served as our office administrator for 14 and a half years, um, a little, just right at, a little over 14 and a half years, and uh, did a wonderful job. And, and she has decided at the end of December that her time to do that is over. And, uh, and so now we get the fun job of trying to replace her. Um, but we want to celebrate Francis's time with us. Much to her chagrin, she doesn't want a reception, but we're doing it anyway, Francis, because we love you and we're going to honor you. And it will just be, it'll be in Christopher Hall, a time of, uh, of uh, celebrating Francis, two weeks from today. I um, want to lift up a couple of prayer concerns for you this morning. Laura, I'm glad to see that you are here. I sent out an email on uh, uh, the incident that happened at Laura's house, uh, just another devastating thing, uh, someone lost control and drove through her yard and tore down her porch and her carport and destroyed her car. Um, and, uh, and so um, we want to continue to lift Laura up in prayer as she deals with the aftermath of that. Thank goodness nobody was hurt in that incident. Also have received word from several folks this week who are experiencing all kinds of different illnesses, colds and flu-like symptoms and uh, we just want to remember all of those who are battling those illnesses today. I invite you now into a time of prayer with me. Oh God, you have invited us to come and see what you have in store for us. In our time of worship, in our time of prayer, in life in general. What you have to offer us in your son Jesus. So we have gathered this morning in expectation, in anticipation that, that as we worship you, as we praise you, your spirit will move among us and we will experience your presence. And we will be strengthened in our faith and empowered to go and be the people that you have called us to be. People who, who are intent on sharing your love. People who want to share your grace. People who are so excited about who you are and what you've done and what you are doing that that we want to live in a way that invites others to come and see as well. Oh God, on this day, we come together as your body. And we know that we are joined with others throughout this country, around our globe, who are joined together in worship and prayer. People of all colors, all races, all nations, all backgrounds, rich and poor, young and old, it does not matter. For we are joined together through your Son, Jesus. We pray that as your church, we will find ways to make you known in our world by reaching out to those who are in need, by supporting those who need help, taking care of those who are sick, visiting those who are lonely, comforting those who are grieving, And being present with those who just need someone there. Lord, give us your strength that we may do all these things and more. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, the one who taught us that when we pray, we pray in this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth 
as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We are going to now take up our offering, so I'm going to invite our usher to be preparing for that. Um, and uh, as they come forward, we will pray. Let's go to God in prayer as they come forward. Oh God, as we come to this time of sharing our gifts back with you, we pray, we pray that we will realize and appreciate all that you have done, all that you've given us, and the call you place in our lives to give back. Take these gifts, receive them, and bless them, and send them forth. In Christ's name, amen.
And I'm going to invite you to remain standing as we sing number 349, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. each other this morning in the name of Christ before you have a seat. We're going to begin with a scripture reading this morning from the Gospel of John. It's a rather lengthy reading this morning, but I wanted to share this whole, uh, this whole pericope of scripture with you today. From the first chapter of the Gospel of John, chapter 35, I mean chapter, verse 35 through verse 51. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, look. Here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, Where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are called to be Cephas, which is translated Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to go up to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God 
ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, your scripture has been read, your praises have been sung, and we await a word from you today. And I pray that I will not stand in the way of your word. So speak through me. Speak in spite of me. But speak. We have come to see. We have come to hear. We have come to listen. In Jesus' name, amen. At some point in each of our lives, we have received an invitation to come and see Jesus. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. And we have come. We've come to Jesus. We've seen Jesus. And in some way, Jesus has met our needs. He has fulfilled our expectations. He has given us hope. He has offered us love and grace like no other could. So we decided we needed to follow him. As his followers, as his disciples, we have identified him as the anointed one of God, the, the Jesus, the Christ, the Son of God, the Lamb of God, our teacher, our rabbi, our Messiah, our friend. But the Gospel of John will not let us be content with keeping Jesus just to ourselves. John the Baptist couldn't, as he exclaimed to his disciples, his own disciples, look. Here's the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Andrew couldn't either as he ran first to find his brother saying, We have found the Messiah. And neither could Philip who, who, who excitedly invited his friend Nathaniel to come and see. Come and see. This morning I want you to take just a moment to think about the invitation, maybe the invitations you have been handed in your life to meet Jesus. When did they occur? Where did they occur? What were the circumstances you happened to find yourself in at the time they occurred? And maybe, most importantly, who was it? Who was it that extended the offer to you to come and see Jesus? Take a moment to think about that. I mean, some of us have to go way back. Hold on to those thoughts. You know, over the past several years, I've had the opportunity to, to work with a lot of students, especially ele elementary age students in our local schools as a mentor, as, a, as our job as partners in education. Uh, back before I came here, it was with a program called Dogs. Y'all ever heard of Dogs? dads of great students and one thing that has been consistent in my work with elementary age kids is that that they have always invited me or whoever was working with them to come and see what they were working on it, it might have been math it could have been a book they were reading but they always got especially excited about sharing their creative artwork things they had built with Legos, crafts they had done with beads, masterpieces they had drawn with crayons. Mr. Porch, come and see what I did. And sometimes it wasn't even their own work they wanted you see. It was their, it was their neighbor's work. Mr. Porch, come and see what so-and-so did. It's pretty cool. You need to see it. I think what made that so much fun for me was I got to, got to join in the experience with those kids in one way or another by just seeing what they had to share. I got to share in their excitement even if I couldn't tell that the lines on the page were supposed to look like a fishing boat or a house or a forest or an animal. You know what I'm talking about. It didn't matter. They were excited and I was excited to see it. 
What mattered to me was that they had, had, had so much excitement about it that they invited me to share in it something that they found important. And what mattered to them was that I came and saw whatever it was they wanted me to see. It's not unlike this series of invitations and responses that we find in the Scripture from the Gospel of John today. For in this passage and throughout the Gospel of John, people are invited to, to come and see Jesus. Sometimes by Jesus himself. And what we learn in these encounters is that, that they're all invited, but not every invitation is exactly the same. They don't all look the same. They don't all sound the same. And neither are the responses. We see that, that an invitation isn't always a one-time experience. You know, those first disciples of John were given the heads up by John himself when he said that Jesus, the, the Lamb of God, is the one you need to follow. So they, they decided they'd follow, and as they followed, Jesus says, what are y'all looking for? They said, teacher, where are you staying? And once again, they received an invitation, because Jesus turned and said, come and see. Come and see. Scripture tells us they came, and they saw, and they remained with him that day. Then Simon Peter responds to the invitation given by his brother Andrew. Philip falls in line when, when, when Jesus invites him to follow. Nathaniel, despite some skepticism, uh, comes to Jesus when Philip calls to him that day and says, he needs to come and see. Every character, every character brought something different to the table. Every character had different needs and, and, and different expectations. And Jesus was there to meet them all. Or exceed them all. The understanding of who Jesus was and who Jesus is could not then and still cannot be limited to any one experience or any one title or, or any one discovery. Jesus is bigger than that. Now just a minute ago I asked you to think about the, the times that that you have been invited to, to find Christ, the times that we have been invited to come and see. And if we were to share those memories, those stories in here today, I, it would take a long time, I know. But I'm almost certain that all of those, out of all of those, no two would be exactly alike. There would be some similarities, but none would be identical. The people who invited us weren't the same. The ways they invited us weren't the same. Our needs weren't the same. Our responses probably weren't the same either. But that doesn't mean that any one of those experiences is any better than the other because they were all about invitations to come and see Jesus. And it doesn't mean that, that any one response was more valid than another as long as we came to see Jesus. It just means that we've all been invited. We've all been invited at some point, maybe many points, to come and see Jesus. Therefore, we should not judge another person's experience as more or less important than our own because it is different. I mean, think about it. John the Baptist found the one he called the Lamb of God. His teacher, his disciples found the one they called the teacher. Andrew encountered the one he called the Messiah. Peter found someone who knew him before it was even possible. Philip located the one he said was the fulfillment of Scripture and prophecy. Nathaniel called Jesus the King of Israel. Each one a little different, and yet each of those encounters had two things in common. First, they involved personal contact with, it, with and the development of a relationship with Jesus himself. Second, they all began with an invitation to come and see. Come and see who Jesus was and what Jesus had to give. So what does this mean for us today? I, I, I believe it means that, that we cannot predetermine how Christ will interact with those around us. And therefore, we cannot devalue another person's experience just because it's not the same as ours. 
On the contrary, we need to try to expand our thinking and our understanding of Christ by observing and celebrating with those whose encounters have been different than our own. Because some have needed a healer, some have needed a teacher, some needed a forgiver, others just needed a moral guide. Still others needed somebody to sing with them. Somebody who would listen to them. Someone who just would be a friend for them in their lonely times. And some need a little bit of all of that at one time or another. But no matter what, we know, we know that Jesus desires that each one of us come and, and see for ourselves. He's invited us, and if needed, he'll find a way to invite us again. Because the invitation still stands, come and see me. No matter how well we think we know him, no matter how many great things we have seen already in our life, Jesus said to us, says to us, just as he did to Nathaniel, you'll see greater things than that if you'll just keep coming and seeing. Come and see. Following Jesus on our journey of faith. That's the life of a disciple. A disciple is one who has heard and heeded that invitation. A disciple is one who continues to follow and watch because they're not content with just a single encounter with Jesus. A disciple is one who can identify Jesus for who he has been and who he is. But there's more than that to being a disciple. In the Gospel of John, being a disciple is not just coming to, seeing, and identifying Jesus. That's only part of it. For the other part, we have to look at the actions of John the Baptist and Andrew and Philip, who could not wait, who could not wait to find somebody else with whom they could share their wonderful discoveries. John had a following all of his own. He had his own disciples, but when he found Jesus, he pointed them in his direction and disappeared into the back. Because it was no longer about him. It was all about Jesus. Andrew, Andrew was so excited that it says he went and found his brother Simon first. Before anything else, he had to share Jesus with Simon. And Philip did the same thing. And even when Nathaniel got a little skeptical, you know, that whole, can anything good come out of Nazareth comment? Philip continued. Come on. I think about all those kids throughout all my work at the schools who were so excited about what they had done or what they had, uh, what they had seen in their neighbor's work that they had to have somebody else come and experience it too. They wanted somebody else to look at it. That's how these first disciples were. So excited about Jesus. They couldn't keep it to themselves. You see, the invitation to discipleship to, discipleship, to come and, and see Jesus is ours, but it's not ours to keep, not just for ourselves. Just as somebody has shared that invitation with us, it is important that we find ways to share it with others. The Gospel of John does not allow us to, to just sit back and be content to experience Jesus all by ourselves. It's not just about a me and Jesus thing. If we have come to Christ, if we have seen Christ, if we have experienced Christ, then the, then the word of this gospel is that we will not be able to keep quiet about what he's done and what, who we found him to be. We'll want others to find what, who we have found. We will want others to see what we have seen. We will want others to experience what we ex have experienced in Jesus. It reminds me of, of, of that old commercial by Fabergé Organic Shampoo. Y'all remember this one? The, the woman uses Fabergé shampoo, shampoo, and it's so good, it says she has, to, she has to tell two friends about it. And what do they do? They tell two friends about it. And as the commercial goes, and they tell two friends, and they tell two friends, and so on, and so on, and so on. 
we need to tell two friends about Jesus. Because there's a big world out there. There's a big world outside of these four walls. I know sometimes we, we kind of we pin ourselves in, in, inside here, but there's a big world outside these four walls, and in that world there's a lot of people who have never experienced the love or the joy or the mercy over the hope that is found in Jesus Christ. And there's a lot of people who have never responded to the invitations they've already received to come and see for themselves, and so they need to receive another one. And there's a lot of people who have been invited and, and they've come to see Jesus, but they turned away because their experiences to that point didn't fit some preformed mold or some predetermined expectation, and maybe they need another opportunity. And believe it or not, there's some people out there who have never even been offered the invitation to come and see Jesus. As we sit here this morning, we remember our own invitations that we've been giving. We're, we're giving thanks for those who have offered them to us. We praise God for the gift of His Son, Jesus. And we prepare ourselves to keep following and to see these greater things that He has promised. And as we do all of that, we, we, we hear again that, that call from Jesus to come and see, come and see, come and see. And in the midst of our own decision to follow him, we, we hear the call to invite others to do that as well. This morning, we, we must ask ourselves, are we, are we so excited about what we found in Jesus that we're willing to go out and tell two friends about him? Are we so excited? about who Jesus is, that we want to share him with the world. The actions of John the Baptist, the actions of Andrew, the actions of Philip stand as models of discipleship for us today as we seek to share what we have found with the world around us. There are many, many who have not met Jesus, who need to hear the invitations. And sometimes that's all it takes. It's one more invitation. And I know, sometimes that's a scary thought, but really, really, it's not that hard. It's not that hard to invite somebody to see Jesus. If you struggle with where to begin, begin by remembering those three little words. Come and see. Come and see. Come and see who Jesus is. Let's pray. Lord, we struggle sometimes with this thing called evangelism because we think it's a big, big program. We, we think it's knocking on doors of people we don't know. We, we think a lot of things about it, but, but when we boil it all down, it comes down to a simple invitation. Inviting others to come and see who you are. And what you have to offer. So that they might experience your love and grace for themselves. Today as your church, give us that strength to do that. Let us be excited enough I want to share you with two friends. With the hope that they'll share you with two friends, and they'll share you with two friends, and so on, and so on, and so on. Help us remember these three simple words. Come and see. And this we pray in the name of Jesus our Savior. Amen and amen. I'm going to invite you to turn to page 454 in your hymnals or on the screens as we sing, Open My Eyes That I May See. Would you stand? Silently now I wait. 
be seated. For those who have been worshiping online with us today, I pray God's blessing upon you this week. May you be like a fourth grader who is so excited about what Jesus has done in your life that you cannot help but invite somebody to come and see Jesus. Amen. Have a great, blessed week.